Today, I'm going to create a charcoal drawing of a deer skull life from a photograph using compressed charcoal mostly and a little bit of vine charcoal. This is a great lesson if you're learning how to draw things from observation and also focusing on value. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. Here are the materials I will be using, an eraser, compressed charcoal, vine charcoal, two different sizes of blending stumps, a small paintbrush for blending, and on the left-hand side, that little piece of sandpaper, um, that is to sharpen my blending stumps when they get too messy and too charcoaled. I will be sketching my artwork first on a piece of cream colored charcoal paper. And the photograph on the bottom left screen is the photograph that I took from the still life that I set up in my classroom. I took a picture, I cropped it, I made sure I had one dominant skull as my area of emphasis. Then I edited it on my phone to make sure I had black, white, and all the areas of gray. So dark gray, medium gray, and light gray. Having a quality photograph to look at, or even better, drawing this from direct observation from a still life setup is key to a successful drawing. Hi Grace, over to the left, that's my student Grace talking to me while I'm sketching, so that's her artwork over to the side. I do think drawing from observation is the best way to develop your skills, but this lesson for my students is how to see value, so that's the areas of light and darks. And sometimes that can be difficult to do if you're looking at an object from direct observation. Now, if I were doing this with my more advanced students or my AP art classes, I would have them draw from direct observation and not rely on a photograph. A photograph can compress images, make things flat. Um, drawing from life definitely gets, gives you just better results and it's just a better learning um, skill. But again, this is for drawing, um, seeing value. So if you're a beginner, it might be hard to see something and, and see it not as color, but as darks and lights. And so if you photograph your own composition and edit the photograph, you have more control over that. Some of you will not have access to a skull at home, so you might have to rely on someone else's photograph. My suggestion, never copy another artist's work directly. Change it enough so it becomes your own image and your own ideas. The background is just as important as the, as the uh, skull itself. So you can see now I am adding details of the background. Um, there's some fabrics. There are some other antlers that cut through. And I am only drawing my major largest shapes. I'm focusing on size, shape, and placement. I'm not worried about all the fine details yet. That's what I will do when I go in with my charcoal. So this is just kind of outlining, focusing on how things line up. And it's okay if it changes a little bit. My goal is not photorealism. I am not looking for something um, that looks exactly like the photograph, but I am going to hold myself accountable to make sure it resembles the photograph. And again, this is a value study. Um, so those areas of darks and lights will be my main focus. Now that I have my basic composition sketched out, I'm going to do something called value mapping. And that is where I look at certain parts of my image and I find the darkest areas, the lightest areas, and everything in between. So here's my photograph printed out. Um, I also have the photograph down to the left. And what I'm doing now is finding those darkest areas. So I'm gonna to refer to my value scale. And if you've never done a value scale before, that is absolutely the best way to start learning a material and how to see value. So I put my value scale up in the top left. I will be looking at that as I'm working. And I'm putting in my darks first. That's the way I like to do it. I decided to start with my skull first because if I do my background, there's so much black area. I felt like my artwork would get really messy really fast. So I'm just focusing in on my area of emphasis. I'm using my sandpaper here to um, get a finer point and a less dirty blending stick. And so I found those darkest values in the shadows underneath the skull. And on the right hand side of the skull, there's a nice little like, not dark gray area, but more of my medium, more in shadow, more of those medium to dark grays than the other parts. So you can see I applied the value dark, then I go in with the blending stick and my finger and kind of pull those values um, and then use my eraser because they are a little darker than they are in the photograph or on the skull. So I'm kind of playing around with different tools to use, um, blending out that kind of dark area. Keep in mind you can erase charcoal, but you're never gonna get it perfectly white or perfectly the color of your table once there is, or not table, <laughs> your uh, paper, once the value is applied. Now there is such a thing as white charcoal. It is so much fun to use. Um, I am not using that with this artwork. I'm keeping it very basic and simple. So I'm just using white paper and a compressed black charcoal stick. You can use, there's colorful pastels. You could use a range of gray charcoal that they make, but I'm keeping this very basic with material so I can focus on creating those values myself. 
And although white would be a really great choice here, I'm still just relying on the white of my paper. So if you want something pure white, let it alone because once charcoal touches it, it's gonna always have a tinge of gray to it. Now I'm focusing on the shadow of the nose. It's darkest where the hole is, and then it kind of has a flatter area that recedes in. Um, and that's what I'm working on now that is more of a, it's still a light gray, it's just not pure white. So I am focusing in first, yes, I did my darkest areas first, but at the skull itself, this is one of the lightest areas of the work of art in general. The fabric to the left is white, that is the lightest area, but lightest in the skull is where my lighter grays are gonna live. So I should say here, I am not focused on tons of small detail yet. This is mapping out my value, but it is also um, mapping out my composition. It's blocking things in. I am paying attention to detail and value, but I know the really fine details, like all the details in the teeth um, and the eye socket, that will come later. This is like my first brush with this area, my first attempt to look at it, study it, get that value in there, but I know I'm gonna be going back several times to this area to really tighten up the value, tighten up the details and the edges, which I will talk about as I'm creating. This artwork, by the way, or this video, I should say, is pretty long um, because I want to be able to start to finish, create this work of art. Um, before I edited the video, it was 77 minutes long. So I did speed things up just a little bit. I'll cut out some of it, but this is one of my longer videos just because I wanna talk um, from start to finish what my process was creating this value study um, with the skull and these materials. So I'm moving on to the more shadows in the antlers here. Again, I know that there's a lot of texture that I'll be doing as like a finishing touch. I'm just focusing on keying this skull to the values that I see. Um, which will change. The background is so dark that once I put that black behind the skull, it's gonna really make these light grays just pop. Speaking of the background, I'm just itching to get that in there. What I love about this is that little black shadow, that little black area of fabric right under the nose. I think that gives such a pop of contrast to the white of the skull and then the even whiter fabric in the background. So I'm trying to get that in. Um, although that is black, if you see there's a lighter gray, well, it's more of a medium gray fabric that kind of cuts behind the skull. I really like that because in the background itself, I have this really clear white area, this really clear black area, and then a couple little spots of a medium gray, which really just pops the antlers in the white part of the skull. So as you can see, I'm taking the side of my charcoal and I'm filling in those large areas. Um, if you wanna cover a large area, charcoal is great for that because you can turn it on its side and create value across a really large plane. When I set up the still life for my students, I did try to include some fabric that wasn't just jet black because I wanted it to not just look like the skulls were floating in space. So I'm turning my charcoal on the edge and then I am doing a dark to medium gray um, for this strip of fabric underneath the dominant or main deer skull. I love that texture. I think it looks like the fabric. And so I'm blending with the blending stick a little bit to give that shadow kind of underneath the um, antler on the left-hand side. But overall, I do want this texture to stay the way it is. I don't want everything to have the same smooth blended texture. So I'm going to leave that at, um, kind of how it is for now. And I can always go back and do a little more shading and shadow work um, as it develops. Now that I've blocked in kind of the bottom of the artwork, I'm gonna shift my focus to the antlers in the top right-hand corner. And as I'm working, I'm kind of doing that. I'm focusing on edges and corners at a time. So like bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm adding my darkest value on the right-hand side, and then I'm gonna blend that into the antler to create those medium and light grays. So you can see the highlights at the tip of the antler, but also on the left-hand side. The background is black, so if I add too much, all I have to do is um, make that part of the background. So you can see I'm pulling in that black with the blending stick to create that three-dimensional antler effect. And then I'll kind of go back and shave in the black, and so anything that's too dark or too thick, I can just make that part of the background. Um, the blending stick's great for this just because of the um, shape of the antler. It really works well. Um, you could use your finger, but I find that the blending stick has a little bit more control. Um, and I'm gonna do this repetitively, so I'm doing slowest on the top left antler. And then when I go to the other areas, again, this video is long, but I don't want it the full 77 minutes of footage. So I might kind of crop or go a little faster in those areas since I am repeating this technique. The eraser is so great for smoothing your lines and creating those lighter values if you over apply or over blend your colors or your values. 
this is no color, it's all black, white, and gray. So once you have it mapped out, then you can go in with the black charcoal um, and really get that shadow on there, but also make the background black, if that's what your photograph looks like. It really depends on the deer skull angle you're doing. It might be different than this, but look how that um, black charcoal really cuts in. And it makes, because of how dark it is, it makes those grays appear even lighter than they did before. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because I'm gonna turn my charcoal on the side and just color something completely black, which is not a hard technique, it's just time consuming. So I sped this up to twice the speed I did it in real life using the same technique of applying the dark where the shadow is, blending it smooth with the blending stick. Then I'll go back into my with my eraser, smooth it out, and then I go in and I make my black background. The cool thing about these antlers is if you look closely, they are much darker than the antlers of the dominant or main skull. So I'm gonna make sure to pay attention to those differences, um, pay attention to which antlers are darker, which are lighter, and which have more highlights and more shadows. I'm gonna use my blending stick around the edges because you do want the edge of your object to be defined. So if the background is black, make sure it's very black next to the lighter gray of the antler. Um, to get a really rich, dark background, I have found, and my students have found too, that if you use your finger to blend it, it really pushes it down into the charcoal paper. So to create really smooth, really dark backgrounds using your finger once you apply the charcoal um, has been the most successful way to do that in the experience I've had with this compressed charcoal. Now that I've done more than one set of antlers, I'm inspired to go back to the main skull itself and really pay attention to those edges I was talking about. So you can see I'm making sure that the background is clearly defined, the back antlers are clearly defined, and then where they interact with the skull is something I need to work on. So I'm just kind of getting some charcoal on my blending stick, applying some values now that I want some more detail in the skull itself. And I'll pay attention also to how those smaller antlers are a little bit darker than the white part of the deer skull. On round two with these details, I am using the vine charcoal that I talked about. Um, this vine charcoal is actually homemade. My husband is a painting professor and his students um, lit a fire at their university and made some homemade charcoal, which was really cool. And he um, gave me some to use with my students as well. I found the vine charcoal, it's not as messy. It doesn't get as dark or as opaque, but for the details in the skull, I actually really like that. Okay, watch me do this, not to interrupt myself, but do you see that connection of that lighter gray in the front contrasting with the more medium gray of those antlers? Those interactions are gonna be very important in your still life, objects being clear which object they belong to and really paying attention to the nuance of, okay, this skull is lighter, so that needs to pop and be in front of the slightly darker gray antlers on the other side. I'm gonna be paying very close attention to those interactions as I develop this drawing more. The whole point is a value study, looking at the areas of light and dark. So especially in the main dominant skull or whatever the main dominant um, images in your work of art, those interactions and those attention to details, that's gonna really take your artwork to the next level. Let's move on to the left-hand side of this photograph, which I really love because it has this like little triangle of a lighter gray and then this pure white fabric that cuts through the antlers. And I think that's a really nice contrast with the black right next to it. So it's like the antler next to the black. And then it makes it look so much darker when the antler is medium gray and then the background is white. So with my photograph, I really wanted to pay attention to how that looks. I'm not gonna show every second of me making those antlers because it's the same technique you've seen me do twice now. And again, when you're learning, you don't need to watch me draw every single step of the way. Just get the main idea and try techniques. So you can see I've already developed those antlers same way I did it in um, the other section, except I don't have a black background to kind of cut and save um, any mishap in shape. So I did try to focus on making my edges um, the right size to start with. I can go back in with my eraser, but an eraser, like I said, isn't gonna make it pure white. I love this little gray triangle. You see me adding um, more detail to it. It's background, but it really is important, and I like how it's in the corner of my drawing. I think having something in a corner uh, makes for a really interesting and nice composition. And that little section of white underneath it just is a really nice pop of contrast. Um, and I love the play of having antlers with white behind it, with black behind it, and that just gives it a really dazzling um, range of values to look at. I'm using 
my eraser since I don't have the luxury of having a black background there to cut in any weird shape in my antler. Um, and I'm gonna move on to the right-hand side. Um, this is a really important part of the drawing because the antler cuts off the page and then swoops across in that top corner. I've already talked about how important corners are in a composition, and I love that really thick white antler that just cuts through and creates this beautiful swoopy diagonal. So texture is also gonna be important here. And I'm just gonna go ahead right now and zoom ahead and get that background really shaded in. You can see I'm using the same technique where I'm using my finger, applying tons of compressed charcoal. You can see it just building up on my table there. And I feel like once I get that solid black, I can go in and rework um, the areas of gray. I almost forgot in my drawing, well, I did forget, in my drawing to do that swoopy part of the antler I'm talking about. And so I didn't draw it. So I'm gonna have to go back and kind of erase and make sure that that antler is a part of the composition. Well, I'm going to sketch it in since I forgot to draw it in pencil. Um, and I love, Oh, and there's the eraser kind of cutting through. Um, I really love the play of value here. It gets really light at the very top of the paper, but then there's a shadow on the right-hand side. I also think the size is really interesting because it's like right closest to the camera. It is the largest part of the antler, and I want that to really pop in the corner of my paper. I want it to really be white, one of the lightest values on my page. This is a really exciting, but also kind of scary part of um, a work of art because I have blocked in pretty much everything. I've paid attention to all areas of my paper except that little corner there that I just did black off camera. Well, I edited it out so this video isn't 77 minutes. Um, so that solid black area, same steps you've seen me do before. And now it's like, well, now what? I've touched every part of my paper. I've added value. Um, but attention to detail and tightening things up is where I'm at now. I'm gonna be using vine charcoal compressed charcoal and a paintbrush to get really nice smooth areas. What I'm doing now is adding those darker areas a second time and I'm going to pay attention to the actual little lines, dots, and textures. You can see me using a paintbrush here and I love the smooth um, shading you can get. The blending stick sometimes makes a terrible noise. It bothers my students a lot. And so the paintbrush is a familiar object. It's just a really smooth way to create value. And I think it's really great for those soft light grays that are gonna be so dominant when drawing a skull with charcoal. So that's what I'm paying attention to now. Um, like for example, I know in the teeth, there's gonna be more detail to be had. So I'm just trying to really focus in on the small details um, where the teeth are touching the um, fabric, where there's shadows, and just really using my eraser to get those white areas really light. So once you're done putting charcoal on your whole page, let it sit for a minute, come back to it with fresh eyes, and really pay attention to the relationships of value, um, the relationships of lines, and any small little detail that's just gonna take it to the next level. When doing a still life or any drawing, think about what your main subject is, and keep in mind that that area of emphasis, that dominant area, um, really should have the most focused detail. So I'm gonna go back in, and not only is the skull, this skull, the dominant area, the eye. That is like a really dark, large shape that just draws your eye in. Um, and so that area I really need to pay special close attention to, making sure it's the right shape. The lights are as light as they should be and the same with the darks. And there's these really fun little light lines and patterns I'm gonna add as well. Um, I might spray it with fixative first and then kind of come back in there. So using the brush is great, it really softens your value, but then you wanna be confident in leaving some of your marks heavier, darker, and not blended to create those dominant areas. And I always have a hard time with that. I always kind of over blend because it's easier to do that than it is to be confident in the shape that I've created. So a really emphasized area that I wanna get right because they contrast so well um, with the fabric and they're like pointy, creepy teeth, which is fun. My students and I had a nice long debate about why are the deer skull's teeth so sharp and pointy if they're an herbivore. If you have the answer to that, please let me know in the comments because I have no idea. And just those like clarifications of little shadows in the teeth I find so exciting to look at. If you have a charcoal pencil, those small details like at this stage might be easier to do with a charcoal pencil, like these little dots, these little holes that are in the skull that I'm kind of tapping gently. And I believe I'm using the vine charcoal here. I could be wrong. Um, and I'm gonna try and talk myself out of using, um, no, that's the compressed charcoal it looks like. Oh, nope, I grabbed the brush. I'm gonna try and talk myself out of like smoothing them out. I wanna leave them dominant because they are there. They are, they're very dark. And that's gonna give the skull like a very finished quality to it. I neglect the nose a little bit. I could definitely spend more time doing that. 
Um, but I do feel like the whole exercise of this drawing is value mapping and, you know, practicing composition. So I do feel fine. This is not a hyper-realistic artwork for me. So I'm totally fine with the level of detail I put in once I focus in the texture of the antlers. And that texture is just so interesting because it's, it's so different down at the base of the antler than it is anywhere else. It's not smooth, it has the texture to it. Um, and so I'm just gently tapping my charcoal to create that area. I think I'm at the point now where I'm gonna spray it with some fixative so that everything I've done doesn't smudge and it kind of stays in place. I am kind of going back and darkening things up. I'm gonna be using workative, workative, wor wait, workable fixative, there we go, which will allow me to add more detail um, once it's dry. I can still work with it. It doesn't seal it like I can't add and blend. It's just not gonna make it smudgy and it's gonna hold and keep permanent all the detail I've done so far sprayed my fixative outside in a well-ventilated outdoor space because um, if you spray this in the classroom or at, or at home it's you need to do it outside or somewhere with a ventilated space because it's the fumes are pretty intense um, and so now that I have this all kind of sealed I'm just gonna go back and find like I want my blacks blacker those lines that I added I want to make sure that those lines and textures show up but I really am feeling pretty much done um, I'm taking the vine charcoal and just adding like a few little last minute dots and textures and details. It's going to make it look like I, um, you know, paid attention to those small details. Sometimes I think with a step like this, um, like I sprayed it with fixative and I didn't look at it for a good 20 minutes or so. And I think stepping back and looking at it from a distance is very crucial and important. You should definitely hang it up somewhere, um, walk by it a few times and come back to it with a fresh, um, fresh eye. Sometimes you get so close to your paper that you can't see the forest for the trees. And what I mean by that is you get so stuck on the little details or imperfections that you can't really see the work of art for what it is. So I've had some time away from this and I'm just gonna do some really last minute additions, changes and blendings before I call this thing done, which I'm pretty close to doing. In fact, I think I'm gonna make myself put down my materials and call this done, because if not, I would sit here and I would work and work and work, and sometimes knowing when to be finished is very difficult. So let's call this thing and let's say it's finished. It has been a really long time since I sat down and have done a charcoal drawing, especially one that's just so clearly focused on just creating value and contrast. So I feel pretty happy with this. Um, charcoal can be messy, but it's also really fun to work with. Thank you so much for sticking around with this long video, making art with me. If you're interested in more drawing tutorials, check these out. And if you're interested in what my students are up to in my classroom, find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado.